Not much doubt about that. So, how fast was that? How much fast is actually fast? Do you know how the speed of balls is calculated in the game of cricket or in tennis, etc? Let's learn about one of these techniques in this video, so stay tuned with me. Yeah, in the game of cricket, primarily there are two methods which are used to determine the ball speed. Number one is the radar gun speed, which is based on the concept of Doppler effect. And number two is the Hawkeye system, which is a computerized system containing six different cameras to capture the ball speed. In this video, let us learn about the radar speed gun because two things, the concept of Doppler effect as well as the radar system. It is both of them related to the competitive exam syllabus of yours, be it gate, engineering services or POCs or these questions related with, you know, the Doppler frequencies and radar functioning is also an important element in many PSU interviews. So stay tuned to learn the radar speed gun. Right. So now to begin up the discussion of radar speed gun, it is very important to understand what this Doppler effect is. And to make you understand the Doppler effect, let us take an example of a boat in a water body. Let's have a look into an animation. So initially we have a man and boat just in a silent water body. Now what if I try to disturb the water body somehow through this paddle, we just expect some water waves to originate approximately in circular form. And we all know that the number of waves passing per one second is known as the frequency. And say for example, the frequency here is seven. Okay, now when the boat is going to move forward, now let's move the, boat, move the boat forward and then if there is an observer in front of the boat, he is going to observe the waves which is closer, that is with more frequency and an observer who is backward is going to observe less frequency. Yes, that is what is the Doppler effect. The observed frequency when the body is moving towards an observer is higher than that of the actual frequency. Well, well, I guess you might have understood the phenomena and the concept of Doppler effect using the animation that I've just shown you. And yes, the radar gun works on the same principle. Yes, radar gun is a microprocessor based computing device that is used that is using the Doppler radar transceiver. And you know, where is it connected? You know, in the cricket stadium where the side screen is there, the side screen, which is just in front of the batsman at the end. Yes, just beside the side screen on a pole, this radar gun, radar gun is attached. The radar gun emits microwaves at a particular frequency and when these waves interact with a stationary ball, the balls reflect back the waves but at the same frequency. But if the ball is also moving towards the radar gun, the observed frequency of the reflected wave is definitely higher than that of the transmitted wave as we have just learned earlier in the form of Doppler effect. Yes, now the mixer inside the radar gun is going to identify the difference between the two frequencies. Yes, the difference of the reflected frequency and that of the transmitted frequency. This particular inf information is utilized by the microprocessor inside the gun. The microprocessor is then going to compute the speed of the ball, which is based, which is proportional to the difference of the frequency. The formula for the speed, I'm going to just explain to you in a short while. So yes, microprocessor computes the speed, which is proportional to the difference of the frequency. And then it is going to display that particular speed in miles per hour or kilometer per hour as you desire. Okay, now let us understand in detail the Doppler frequency concept and also the formula to calculate the speed of the ball going straight to the smart board and making you the things little bit more crystal clear in form of equations. Okay, now let us understand the calculations of Doppler frequency and then how to calculate the speed of the ball. So let's say the distance at a particular moment between the radar gun and the target ball is R. Of course, this distance is going to vary, but at a particular moment, say it is R. Now let's uh, study with reference to this. So what is the total two-way distance between the gun and the target ball is 2R. Why two-way distance is important? Because the gun is first of all is going to emit the waves and that wave is going to interact with the ball and it's going to be reflected back and then reach the radar. Okay, so the total two-way distance is 2R. Now, how many wavelengths will be there of the wave within two way communication and that is going to be 2r is divided by lambda and let's say the total wavelength is n okay because you can write it that way you can write it this way as well that okay let's say we have n lambda okay if i have n number of wavelengths it is equal to the distance of n lambda and that is equal to 2r so how many wavelengths within the two way communication it is 2r divided by lambda now what happens within one, one wavelength of a wave we all know within the one wavelength the total phase change suffered by the wave is equal to what is equal to a distance of 2 pi isn't it Within the one wavelength, let's say this is uh, the wave approximately, the wavelength is the distance traveled by the wave after which uh, its value repeat and within that one wavelength, how much is this phase? This is a total sinusoidal phase of 2 pi. Okay, so within n wavelengths, 
with an n wavelengths the total phase will be of course 2 pi into n where we know the value of n is 2r by lambda the value of n is 2r by lambda let me remove this now for a moment isn't it okay putting the value of n 2r by lambda i get 4 pi r divided by lambda now we know how many wavelengths sorry in n wavelengths what is the phase change and now we can calculate the frequency the angular frequency as the rate of change of this phi we know d phi by dt and that is equal to d by dt of this calculation 4 pi r by lambda okay so 4 pi by lambda will be constant that is outside what is left is dr by dt and r was the distance rate of change of distance between what radar and the target there is a ball okay and in our case and in our case the radar is fixed okay and what is moving is the ball okay so this dr by dt is what this dr by dt is like the velocity or the speed of the ball you can refer here and omega can be written as 2 pi fd where fd is the doppler frequency because this is the frequency under the consideration when the ball is moving okay so we have 2 pi fd is equal to 4 pi by lambda into v you can cancel 2 pi here with this 2 pi and then you are going to get the expression for fd v as i told you is the velocity of the target that is the ball in this case so cancelling the 2 pi factor we are going to get fd we are going to get fd as 2 pi by lambda lambda can be written as c by f c by what frequency the frequency of the wave which was transmitted so it is c by ft and eventually it is 2 pi ft is divided by c okay so ft is the transmitted frequency as i mentioned okay so eventually what is the velocity formula from here if you want to calculate the velocity or the speed of the target from here it is going to become c into fd is divided by 2 ft where fd is the doppler frequency and what is the doppler frequency the doppler frequency is defined as the difference between the received frequency and the transmitted frequency here yeah, fr is the received frequency and the doppler frequency is defined as the difference between the received frequency and the transmitted frequency. So, velocity is now equal to f by c by 2 ft into fr minus ft and as I told you that yes, the speed of the ball is proportional to the difference of the frequency. That is what we have just discussed here. We can rewrite this here. Okay, so c by 2 fd by ft velocity is proportional to the Doppler frequency or we can say that this velocity is proportional to fr minus ft, the difference in the frequency of the received wave as compared to that of the transmitted wave. Hope you have understood how the speed of the ball is also measured by a simplistic formula and it is proportional to the difference of the frequency obtained. Okay, now that you have even understood the formula, how the speed of the ball is calculated, let me tell you two major advantages of this radar gun system. Yes, number one, it determines the speed of the ball almost very accurately. Yes, it tells you almost the exact speed of the ball, even though the ball is swinging as well. And number two, it's delay. Yeah, it has a negligible delay. It's it is going to display the speed of the ball in almost no time. And that is the only reason, you know, you, you might have seen cricket matches as soon as the baller bowls the ball, you are, go you are going to just see the speed of the ball immediately just as he delivers the ball so that is a fast particular system in international sports the radar gun was first of all used to measure the speed of the service in case of the lawn tennis yes but in 1999 it was the first time it, when it was used in the international cricket as well but also at the same time just in 2001 an alternate technique was also devised that is the Hawkeye system and that also have been now used in the cricket for so many years. Also guys, not only in the sports, this particular radar gun is also very commonly used in the law enforcement, you know, just to measure the, uh, let's say the speed of moving vehicles, just to know, okay, whenever you are traveling on a road, whether you are following the limit, the speed limit of that particular road or not, if you violate that, you are going to be fine. So the speed of moving vehicles is also measured by the radar gun and I hope you are able to relate, like how the speed of Volvo is measured and how the speed of a moving vehicle can also be measured using the same concept same phenomena okay the similar idea the similar concept is also used you know in the radar system for aircraft or shifts okay to measure the range or the velocity of the target okay so you know there are multiple applications of this i hope uh, you're able to relate all of this in this particular video i primarily focused on uh, how the speed of cricket ball is calculated i hope you have understood through animations through example and through the derivation that i have explained to you just one last request in the end do not 
mention forget to mention in the comment box how you actually enjoy these videos because again i keep telling that these learn with fun sunday special videos are just to arouse the interest that you know whatever you study for your competitive exams be it like doppler concept the doppler frequency concept the radar system how it is practically used and cricket is a thing that many of you can connect uh, you know with your emotions as well so do mention in the comment box how you like the video and how you uh, how much you enjoyed this and if you really liked do not forget to like the video and subscribe the channel by use exam prep youtube channel to get more such videos